All right, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus channel presented by Connors and Ferris. Uh, before we get started, please be sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content. Mike Catalana is in Aruba. Dan Fates, I'm Jenna Cottrell. And you might be like, wait, Jenna looks like she's at Mike's set. I am dog sitting this week. So I'm here watching the pup. Uh, so that's why I have Mike Catalana's uh background i did not sp spontaneously become an eagles fan <laughs> yeah we we're doing double duty here because if you hear uh music it's quiet time for my daughter shane who is underneath the desk so <laughs> we're all doing the best we can here but I, I i texted jenna last night uh and just said we should probably you know i want to talk about damien harris i want to talk about um trent sheerfield and, and kind of just wrap up some of the bills because they are actually making moves and mm -hmm. jenna to be honest the Damian Harris signing is my favorite signing so far outside of Jordan Poyer. Agreed. Agreed. And I think yesterday, you know, we were expecting the bills to add considering Brandon Bean said that last week that they wanted to add another running back. Um, and then to see Devin Singletary move on to the Houston Texans, a one year deal. He got a little bit more money. Good for him. He was great in Buffalo in terms of what he added to the team culture wise, all those things. But Damian Harris Dan, I feel like gives them that different look that they have been searching for. Yeah, this is he's he's what they hoped Zach Moss would be when they drafted yeah. him um, to be this physical style of runner. And the reason I like the move so much. Hi, Shane. Oh, OK, the reason I like the move so much is the fact of he provides something that they don't have right now. Right. And the, yeah. the two running backs they have on the roster right now are are James Cook and Naeem Hines were both like 200 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> Damien Harris, I Damien Harris, first of all, is not the starting running back. He, he's not. He's not RB1. But no. what he is, is this is a team that for the longest time has said they want to be physical. They want to bully people. This is what he is. Like, yeah. he is the bruising, physical style, aggressive running back that I think they've, they've wanted. And they have tried to have their running backs play like Damian Harris plays. And, and yeah. that's that's why I'm so excited about this move because where I think the um, the Hardy signing is like you're just kind of slightly upgrading what you had. The Bills didn't have this. So that's why yeah. it's so exciting to think that like, okay, if they want to be bullies, if they want to run the ball, you need pieces that run the ball in a physical style. And, and yeah. Damian Harris is that guy. I, <clears throat> I think it's literally that because even, I mean, we've obviously been to a lot of Patriots games over the years covering this team. And I feel like Harris is a guy, when you see him step on the field, you're like, you know, he brings that physicality. And even just if you type his name onto Twitter or YouTube or whatever, some of those runs that he had are, are looks angry, like he's angry runs. Exactly. Where he's carrying the defenders, where he's fighting for all those extra yards, where he's able to really, you know, take contact and continue his runs. Um, so I think that's just, it is. And it's something we've, we've, like you talked about, like the Zach Moss, the bills wanted that from Moss. They didn't get that aspect. So to have a guy coming in, um, especially coming from the Patriots, I just think it, it makes so much sense. And he's 26 years old. He averages 4.7 yards a carry. Like I, I, and the short yardage situations, that the Bills have struggled in, where they always give it to Josh Allen. To have another change of pace and a guy who's uh, reliable, I think could just be really big for this team. And it's so true. Buffalo wants to be more physical. So and, now you're adding a guy who brings yeah. that element. Yeah, and it, it was funny because I was thinking about and I was kicking, you know, going around and asking a source, you know, are the Bills in on Ezekiel Elliott? Because yeah. after we heard Brandon Bean say, you know, they need a more bigger back, Zeke obviously is the first one you think of just because of the name and the cachet that it carries. Yeah. Um, and the source said, yeah, kicking the tires, but like, I don't think they're anywhere close on anything. And as he's responding, Jenna's tweeting, I uh, have Jenna notifications on for tweets and it was Damien Harris signing. And I was like, well, that was quick. Like, <laughs> uh, never mind, never mind about Zeke. I think they got their physical back. And this is a guy yeah. that unlike Zeke and unlike Derek Henry, isn't a guy that necessarily needs to Indeed. get 25 carries. This yeah. is a guy that is kind of used to in and out of the lineup in that weird new England offense. He's, he's kind of used to constantly splitting duties. Um, 
I guess really the only game where he was a really big bell cow would have been that that Monday night windy weird yeah. game where he broke the big run. Yeah. Um, but besides that, this is a guy that is used to spelling players coming in and, and having a physical run. Uh, you probably looked it up last night. I thought I saw it. Did he have 15 touchdowns the two years ago? I'll have to recheck. Well, let's do it now, but let's do it. Yeah. You do that now because okay. I'm going to look really dumb if he, if he didn't, but I think he had double digit touchdowns in 2021. That's insane. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I also, this to is your great point, podcasting. Yeah, no, let's see. Um, Damian Harris stats. <clears throat> also, we're doing this podcast if it's not already abundantly clear in the morning. So that's yep. why I sound like this. Well, okay. Um, he had three touchdowns last season. Correct. Let's see. In where, why, why? What did he do the year before? Yes. No. Is that when 2021 was? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. I'm just trying to find 2021, 15 touchdowns. Yep. Pr pretty good stat for me to drop. 929 down. yards, 202 att attempts, 15 yep. games played. Again, 200 attempts isn't crazy. Like that's not. No, it's really not. Well, that's, we're not talking about Derrick Henry, you know, usage. That was Mac Jones rookie year Um, when the offense was, was, was decent. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there are some, some things to really like about it. So again, hey. this is a guy that is good in short yardage. Mm -hmm. He is very good short yardage. Um, and he's also very good. Hang on, Shane, one second. And he's very good at having that nose for the end zone. Yeah. Go ahead. Jared. And, and another thing that jumps out just real quick, looking at his stats is that he's had two fumbles lost. He's only fumbled the ball three times in his career. And there's been two fumbles that have been lost out of that. So I think that's pretty impressive considering he's had 449 attempts, 2,900 or 2,000, <laughs> about 2,100 yards all time. Sorry, I can't do math. Yeah. But again, the fumbles, also the ball control, also just in terms of that and what that can be. I mean, I, we talk about these pieces and how like how necessary they are, but yeah, I just think that's something when you when you look at the Bills, like you need ball security as well. That's another yeah, piece. Yeah. Um, so I really like this move as well. I just wasn't expecting it so quickly after we saw Devin yeah, Singletary yeah. going to Houston. Um, oh my goodness! You say hi, Shane. Hi, 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 Shane. She's sitting. Like in, she's sitting in her car. She Shane already has a nicer car than me. <laughs> no, How? not anymore. How? I know. I did get a new car, folks. Yeah. So, Ooh. yeah, again, I, I think that Damian Harris was a big signing. Obviously, they also signed um, uh, Trent Sherfield. Trent Sherfield. Um, yeah. Okay, wait, hear me out on this. I'm looking at this as, like, you got a upgraded Jake Kumaro. Do you think that's not – like, I expect him to get way an upgraded more – what? Jake Kumaro. Like, you're going to get a guy who actually can play in the offense as opposed to Kumaro, who is really just a special teams guy. I'd go the other way. So what's the other way? I think Kumaro is an upgraded Sherfield. I think Kumaro really? provides more. I think Kumaro provided a legitimate wide receiver five. Like I think he was a legitimate and that just happened to do special teams. This guy is a special teamer. Like he's, he's hmm. special teams. So like, I, I know people want to look at it and say, oh, he's got this speed and look at his size at six one and, and look at this 75 yard touchdown that he had against the 49ers. He had 30 catches last year and that was his breakout year. Nothing against where I think this offense is where I think he can provide, but this isn't some guy that's coming in that, that we're going to be like, Oh, he's going to grab 50 balls. Like I think this is, and he yeah. said it in his introductory zoom. He mentioned special teams about a dozen times. He yeah. knows what he does. He's a special yeah. teamer. And when they asked him what his role in the offense would be, it's like, I'd like to be a weapon. I think he'd like to get some offensive snaps, but yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case. And if Trent Sherfield is getting more than 10 snaps a game on offense, the Bills season has gone terribly, terribly wrong. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying, but also I think what he put on tape last year like Kumaro was a guy that you're right. He he came in, he had to play teams. But at the same point, I feel like with the season that Sherfield was coming off last year, I think the Bills could look to him more, especially considering, and I know like the way Tyreek Hill tweets about him, talks about him, the potential that he sees in him. I mean, that's a that's a guy that 
carries weight in terms of his ability, obviously. What? Okay. But this isn't some 22-year-old undrafted rookie. This is a 27-year-old journeyman who is who he is. Like, I don't think he's going to all of a sudden take the next step. And all of a sudden, it's like the Bills got a steal. They can't believe they found this guy. No. If, 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 uh... See, Shane doesn't even agree with you. Yeah, Shane disagrees too. I, I um, think I think he'll get more snaps than Kumaro in the offense. Do you need to take a, a dad timeout? No, we're okay. Okay. She's just driving. She just wants to drive her car and hear her song. I, I just think that this relatable. is this Jenna. Jenna, we talked about this this the the flow chart of free agency. Mm-hmm. That if your te- if a guy a free agent signs, is he on your team? Yes. Great <sighs> signing. Is he not? No. Bad signing. Like this is a, if, if the Chiefs signed Trent Sherfield, would we be going, "Oh boy." What now they got to deal with Sherfield too? I I think yeah. Like obviously he's not a household name brand when the chiefs get anyone you think wow what can this guy do because he has an elite quarterback giving him the ball i think when i look at this bill's offense look i'm not saying look at Sherfield every day di- no i'm not saying he's a one a two a three or a three a or three b but i'm saying maybe he's a guy that had is coming off a good season maybe those 10 snaps a game maybe the bills will actually look that way as opposed to kumar i mean kumar was injured this past year but well, and that's, I'm just saying his coming off his breakout season was 30 catches. I agree. So he's going to have a small role, but I think he can be kind of an upgraded version of, at least in terms of that's his true. special teams, if, 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 special teams if play as well. is an upgraded Kumaro and he can stay in the field. He has, he doesn't really have any injury history. That's yeah. fair, but yeah. he, he is on the team to play special teams, tackle and run block. And it's, yeah. it's one of, Correct. So it's one of those things. It's one of those moves that really annoys me when you have somebody do a position that isn't their primary role. And you think that like, this is going to separate him from everything else. It's like when you're like, it's like when Mike always talks about, we need a blocking tight end, blocking tight end to stay in. It's like, or how about you get an extra offensive lineman who's better at blocking than the blocking tight end. So it's like, okay, you want this wide receiver to block. That's fine. But if that's what we're talking about with him as a wide receiver, that means he's not that good of an actual wide receiver. Yes, maybe I see what you're saying. You know it's what I'm like, saying? Where it's like it's like it's the like versatility. When, it's like okay, well, maybe it's because you're not that good at one correct. position. It, like I said, that could be what we're talking about with Connor McGovern. Like he's got versatility. That means he probably isn't good enough at one thing necessarily to be a starter. I think I don't. I, that's that's interesting. I I feel like Sherfield. That's to me, a polite way of saying Dan, you're an idiot. No, I just, I don't agree with you. I just feel like I look at Sherfield and I say, that's a solid middle of the road signing. I don't expect him to be, you know, lighten it up on game days, but in terms of on the offense, but at the same point he gives you, I love it. He seems to me like Kumaro had to play teams to make the roster. This guy is making the, could make the roster because of his team's ability. And then add in the fact that he can produce on offense as well. Uh, Absolutely. And also. Two, I just hearing hearing him yeah. talk yesterday with the media, he's such a cultured guy, you can tell already. Literally 100%. direct quote. No job is too small for me. Yep. Like I was like, all like right. Like I said, when he's asked, What what's your role in the offense? Whatever they need me to do. And the culture fits and the DNA. And I got a chip on my shoulder and I'm a journeyman. Yeah. Like he is, he is he is the the offensive version of Tyler Medikavich, where you're like, Yeah, this guy is this guy absolutely fits in this offense. Like in this in this locker room, I hope he can add more on on offense than that's my I, bar. That's okay. my bar. Okay, you know what? You're setting expectations very middle of the road. I think that's what we have to do with this offseason. And I feel like so many people think every team? signing is is the piece that like, oh, I can't believe we got this guy. And always think about why somebody is leaving somewhere. Like, yeah, think fair. about why that team is letting that person walk for a cheap price like where it's like oh i can't believe you know uh damian hardy was that cheap okay well the saints either didn't know how to use him or or things like that think about why miami like oh he's had a great season he had a good year for them why'd they let him go just think about that perspective yeah 
perspective. That's, that's, fair. that's fair. I think that's uh, that's a piece. And I have a guy, you know, in my replies telling me that I'm an idiot because of uh, talking about how Dame, Damian Hare, or sorry, Trent Sherfield said, like, you know, I, if you want to be an elite receiver, you have to have an elite quarterback. And to clarify that, he did say that. You can check out Matt Perino's tweet, but at the same point, I don't think that there wasn't a shot. I honestly don't think that was a shot at Tua. People are nope. so sensitive. I want yep. to be like, who hurt you, man? Like, I just yep. am saying what he said. I think Tua, on, they picked up his fifth year option. I think Tua has done very, very well for himself. <gasps> yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Shane. Hi, Shane. I think it's your second appearance on here. Um, I think so, yeah. yeah. I also think going, going back to it, too, he said he wanted to be in Miami. He said he wanted to stay in Miami. Mm -hmm. So, so that's part of this where it's like, oh, wow, he really took a shot at them. It's like, not, not really. He wanted no. to be in Miami. He said free agency was wild. And that's another example of like, when you're that middle of the road guy, we got to turn it down just a little bit. Thank you. And um, go from there. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not saying I don't like the move. I just have very low expectations as to what I think he can provide offensively. And that's, again, that's I don't think the signing of Deontay Hardy or the signing of Trent Sherfield prevent the Bills from still finding another wide receiver, whether that's in the draft or a bigger name in free agency. Yeah. Do I say yeah. Hi? Okay. okay. It's good talk. <laughs> she, she, good talk. See you out there. Tuesdays with Dad. <laughs> uh, no, I agree. Um, I feel like that's. And again, we're setting the expectations kind of more middle of the road, which I think is important. And Jenna, how often am I the spur of the moment, hot takes guy? I feel like I'm the one now with like Sherfield being like perspective. Like it can be both. Like what is going on? Like, like I'm sitting you. here going, yeah, I go, people are probably going to freak out in the comments going, where's Dan's hot take about that? Sherfield's going to get cut or he's going to be a pro bowler. No, it's probably somewhere in between. Like, and again, I also don't think that if Sherfield, I don't think that we're, I don't think the Bills, not we're, I don't think the Bills are a better a AFC championship contender with or without him. I think he can add pieces. I think he can have moments. But again, the season isn't made or break on Trent Sherfield. Like I'm seeing some people yeah. be like, yes, we got our guy. That's where I'm, I'm just pumping the brakes on Sherfield. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fair. I think people right now are like, oh, I, we want to see him have more of a role on offense because he's coming off that career year. But at the same point, I think when you're Brandon Bean looking at what he's done, sure. what he has in the tank, you're like, okay, yeah, this is a guy that can offer some versatility. But at the same point, I mean, here's the thing: you you still need receipt, like you still need that. You still need talent and weapons on the outside. Trent Sherfield doesn't say, oh, we're and, done. It doesn't correct. matter anymore. And also, I don't want Trent Sherfield taking reps away from Khalil Shakir because that's another guy that I think, again, we, we've we've forgotten about him. And it's like he had some rookie ups and downs and, and a couple yeah. and two bad drops. I know that we can all remember, but yeah. he also made a couple of you know really nice catches, some really nice plays that it's like I want to see more opportunities for him. Um yeah. And like I said, I still think they need to address wide receiver 2B or 3A. I still yeah. think that they're, that that's a big hole. Um, yeah. You know, Brandon Bean yeah. said that Hardy is, you know, they see him as a four, as the, as the fourth wide receiver. Um, but I, I, there's still work to be done um, offensively, even yeah. with the Harris signing, even with Sherfield. Um, and I guess part of it, and we, we talked about it yesterday when we were at the station together, um, part of my maybe tempered expectations are, the loss of Isaiah McKenzie and just thinking about, I don't think Isaiah let the team down as much as Ken Dorsey let down Isaiah, but that's, that is just my, that is just my take on it. And that's nothing new for this channel to know my thoughts on, on the bills OC. Well, we were discussing because, you know, the Sherfield signing and also Deontay Hardy. And, uh, you were like, ah, yeah, ah, ah, ah. I don't know if these, and I'm like, okay, let's get to the root of the problem. Like, let's like, you were like, I don't know if I love these signings. And it's like, well, let's back up and let's assess how you feel about the usage because of the scheme, as opposed to maybe the skill set That's adorable of the player. I got an ice cream. 
Wow. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Because I, because I think Isaiah McKenzie goes to the Giants and has a really good season next year. Is just how I see this happening. And I oh, go, oh, Isaiah gonna, Hodgins. Yeah, and I, and I said there we're gonna go. I can't believe we let him go, and it's gonna be like, yeah, one of these things is not like the other. And again, I hope I'm wrong. This is another one of those things where it's like I'm I don't want to be right. I don't want to be right <laughs> on some of these things. You, but you love being right. Like, let's let's make sure we get that on tape. I don't not hate it. <laughs> you Lots literally will, like, clip stuff that says that you're right. Um, I hear you. This is a huge season for Ken Dorsey. This is make yep. or break. This is, you know, the first year it was your first time calling plays. There's some, you know, leeway. There's some rookie mistakes expected. But this year it is. Yeah. All right. What oh man, and you gotta if you're the Bills, you're hoping that it's pulled together because if there's another year wasted in Josh Allen's, you know, prime in his window, that's tough to swallow. Yep. And the defenses oh. in the division aren't getting worse. And we know what the Jets have, and the Jets are again, I don't think the Jets are the favor in the division. I don't care what the betting odds say. I think you get the Bills at a better price if and when well, when Aaron Rodgers gets straight into the Jets. But yeah. yeah, there's just a lot of pressure of, okay, they learned how to hit your fastball. Like Sean McDermott told us at the combine, what else do you got? And Ken yeah. Dorsey's got to be in his bag right now, figuring stuff out because you can't start out this upcoming season the way that the last season finished. And there Correct. is now more, we always talk about, oh, there's tape on quarterbacks and the cat and mouse game and running backs and wide receivers, all those things. There is now 18 games of what Ken Dorsey has done and yeah. the back half of it isn't great. And so I think there's a very short leash uh, as to how long they can go um, with a mediocre offense, Yeah, which is no, what they kind of had at the end of the season. Which yeah. Is kind of what I they mean, had. Which like you, <laughs> it's funny because I feel like for Bills fans, that's like hard to hear, but also you, you, you felt that because of how much every game was a slog. Like yep. you don't get bonus points. You don't get bonus points for style, but you also at some point it's like, it shouldn't be that hard though. Correct. Like there, it was, there were so many pieces that it was, they were, they were too good to be skating by the way they were almost. And for as much criticism as, as Leslie Frazier got and some he absolutely deserves and where people say, don't look at the stats, Dan, watch it with your eyes. See those things. I would say the same thing about the offense. The stats on paper will look okay. Like, yeah. like, like they will look similar to the bills offense the last few years, but I, yeah. And I would just, I would just say, look at those games with your eyes. Look at Stefan Diggs's frustration when he says it was the last yeah. nine games, how frustrating he was. So yeah. Whole sample size. I wish yeah. Isaiah had the best. He was so classy. His when it, when he got said he could write a book about how much he loved the Bills and said, but all he'll say right now is thank you. So I wish yeah. Isaiah the best. Um, again, very excited about Harris, and we will see about Sherfield. Yeah, I I wish uh, Devin Singletary as well. I think he was he he did what he needed to do in Buffalo. I I said in my sportscast last night he was consistent, which isn't always you know, a, yeah. a, a tremendous thing, but at the same point, consummate pro. And yep. now he's getting more money. He's heading to the Texans. So good for him. All right. We're going to wrap up here. Um, for Mike, who's in sunny. Shane sad. We're leaving. Yep. All right. Shane. Yep. Shane, Shane wants you to like comment, subscribe. Otherwise she's going to keep crying. <laughs> like it's, it's crazy. Your tablet's in your car. Yep. You're going to be saying oh. that a lot. Oh no. Hang on. It's in the stroller. That's where you put it. Okay. All right. For Dan, I'm Jenna. Um, please be sure to great like, show. Comment. Great, great vlog. Ooh, Just we got, we, babies, it we got, we got everything. So I appreciate you guys sticking with us. This is how much we love the, love the content game is that we knew that there were some signings and I wanted to talk about Harris in, in Sheerfield. Yeah. And I knew that this morning we had to talk about it to get it out to you, the, the viewers. And uh, so thanks for bearing with us with a, uh, with a talking child, two and a half year old in the background, handing me ice cream. And, um, yeah, Jenna dog been. sitting. So appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you everyone. We always, and like just touching on that real quick, we so appreciate all the love and it honestly means so much to us. So thank you for that. We all see right. the comments, the good ones and the bad ones.
The yeah. bad ones, the bad ones hurt. I'm not gonna lie. There are they, 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 they hurt, but the good yeah. ones, you know, the direct messages we get on Twitter about how and, much people appreciate the content really mean a lot. So yeah. thank you. And we'll continue it throughout the obviously the free agency and draft. All right. So for Mike, who's in Aruba, Dan, myself, and Shane, thanks for watching. <laughs> Say bye. bye. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching Buffalo Plus. <laughs>